Can we uh, make our way to tables now, please, because the excitement's due to begin? I thought I'd developed dandruff, then I realised it was crumbs off the bacon butty. So bring your drinks and um, a second breakfast, all you hobbits, to the tables, please. So my name is Professor Mark Gabay. I am director of the Applied Research Collaboration Northwest Coast, and I'm very happy to extend a very warm welcome to those of you who are in the room with us today, and there's lots of you. I'm pleased to see the tables are looking pretty full. Um, at home or in offices, virtually via our, our hybrid format, uh, which I hope we're becoming pretty familiar with now and will continue to use moving forward. It was always an intention to have hybrid, even before the pandemic, because we recognize that for many of you, to get here physically would be a push, and so you'd rather be able to do it from your workplace or your own home. We want and expect that things will run smoothly, but please bear with us. There's always gremlins sometimes. So if there is the odd technical glitch, especially when we conduct our interactive conversations um, with both the audience and in the room uh, and those remotely, please bear with us. Uh, and if you have any problems, I think they contact the team via the uh, email that you've been sent and they will help sort that out. So uh, I'm chairing today's proceedings. Uh, agendas are at the desk and around the room, uh, and I'm, um, I've already done that fire bit, so just a, a point about chairing, it often looks in hybrid meetings as if the chair is wittering on. The reason I seem like I'm wittering on sometimes is because it's not always easy for the people who are online to pick up what's going on in the room, so sometimes I will repeat things, and it's not because I'm a bit slow. It's because I'm not always possible for the virtual audience to find out what's being said in the room or pick up on some of the subtleties. So please bear with me when I seem to be doing that. We're using two rooms here in the stadium, one of which is this room, which is known as the Bridge Suite, and the other one is the Corelius Suite, which I think I remember from a long time ago there was a Corelius. Um, and that's for the theme meeting of the Person Centre Complex Care theme. Um, for our virtual guests, just some housekeeping for you. Could you please keep on mute until I ask you to speak if you, uh, and unmute yourself if I ask you to speak? Um, can I also please remind all our virtual guests today to please follow the day by clicking on the Sessions tab on the left-hand side of the platform menu as the day progresses. You can see it has the times and titles of each session that you need to click on to. Otherwise, you may be left behind, and we don't want that. There's technical support available via the chat function on the platform, so please do use that if required. And I think, as I said, there might be an emergency contact email or telephone number, but I haven't got that in front of me. And I can see we actually do have quite a number of people who are with us uh, on the virtual. Um, I'm not going to count them all, but it looks like to be about 20 or 30, as well as... I would think 70 or so or 80 in the room. So we, we did have 150, 160 registers. So hopefully we will get towards those numbers as the day goes on. For those of you who were here in person, please do, if you get the chance, visit the Kitty bus uh, outside the stadium, either for your use as a, potentially as a member organization um, to engage with uh, or, and or come and talk to us about that, or the Clinical Research Network. So, Kitty is a bus equipped for research purposes. We were successful last year with the um, uh, Cheshire and Mersey Integrated Care Board and the ARC with the Clinical Research Network, now called the Research Support Network, or will be soon, to get funding for four more of vehicles like this of different sizes for the whole of the Northwest Coast. And so far 14, but we hope six more primary care settings to have a room for research. And they will be with their own practice and the surrounding practices. We'll be able to use those for our purposes, for bringing people into a room to hold virtual meetings or to hold face-to-face -face meetings about research and about the research we're doing and about the ARC. 
so to get that public involvement in areas of usually with, with low uh, assets locally, well, um, uh, low income areas often, uh, hard to reach populations, to enhance that engagement with the work that we're doing so that we'll have those in physical sites as well as in mobile sites. So they'll be coming on stream in 2024 um, and we have capital money so we'll be working with the practices and we'll be working with some of our member organisations to actually run those buses because unfortunately somebody has to pay for the driver and the fuel and the MOT and the tax etc. So that's why the bus is here to give you a chance to see the sorts of things that we'll be able to do um, to engage that much wider population hopefully in research and we'll also be evaluating that because I think they're quite excited at the centre at this approach that we're taking to enhance engagement. Um, colleagues from Warrington and Holton Teaching Hospital are here um, to check your research tickets uh, if you go into that bus. Uh, and if it's too cold in the, um, I don't understand what I'm saying here. <laughs> I'm going to break away from the, the speech because uh, it, uh, it made sense when it was written, but it doesn't now. So we also have a marketplace. Um, Darren hates me when I do this, but never mind. It keeps him on his toes. So behind you, in the, between us and the food, uh, and there'll be people steering you towards it, we have lots of posters and marketplace. That's how you find out what we do as an ARC. And we also invite our local member organisations to come, uh, which is a new idea for this ARC Fest and going forwards, to have their own table. So if you want to find out what the member organisations who are in this area are also doing in terms of research, they'll have a place on the side there, a marketplace. And please do visit them. Please do find out what's going on. Um, and we want to tell you about our work and how to get involved. We're also in Halton, and we'd like to welcome uh, Halton Council, who are here, to our ArcFest, and indeed lots of other members who've travelled here. If you'd like to host an ArcFest at one of your venues, if you're a member organisation, please do let us know, or if you have a local venue that you say, that would be really good to have one of these, can you please come to us, then do let us know, providing it's somewhere within the northwest coast, obviously. So, I'm going to do some updates about our work. Um, how we can collaborate together, how we can identify opportunities. If you've got things that you think we should be doing and we're not doing, please tell us. Go to the desks of the relevant theme, come to the theme meetings and talk to us about what your ideas are. I'm also delighted to tell you that every year we do an annual report to NIHR and we just got our feedback last week and we're green all over, which is a good thing because it's a green, amber, red uh, response. So. These are some on the screen. You'll see some of the things that they said at different parts of the report. And I think this is actually, I'm pleased to say, the most, we always have positive reports, but this one was especially positive. Lots of positive comments uh, throughout the report. So that's great. Um, and that's important because uh, when we come to the next round of funding uh, for the ARC, which we're now anticipating, and I hear rumours there's going to be more money because they see these as a real success. And if that's right, we want to make sure that we're in there to get the next round of funding uh, so that we can do even more together uh, in 2024 to 30 or whatever the date, uh, 2026, sorry, to 31. Because we're also expecting to hear fairly soon that our business case for extending the current funding from 2024 to 2026 is approved. So that would be more positive news, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. That will be the next ARC Fest. Um, so we've made lots of progress, but now we need to seize the opportunities which days like today present to you um, to produce more successes, to get even more positive feedback next time. So these are some of our priorities for going forward. It's all very well doing research when we're going to get that research into practice. So we'll be increasingly focusing on how we can help our member organisations pick up an idea from the ARC, put it into practice, and we can help the organisation study how that, what we call implementation, putting that work into practice, happens in the real world. That's called implementation. And we can apply what's called implementation evaluations to that 
so that we can put that into practice in other places and learn from what an organization found helped get something into place and what the barriers were and what the solutions were to overcoming those barriers. So that's really important. We're also doing a big project to capture and disseminate the impact of our work, and I've talked about that at previous ArcFests. So we'll be coming to member organizations asking for bits of data, bits of information, and that's why, because we're producing our stories about what differences we've made in the real world. Um, to demonstrate the value of our ARC to our members, to our population and to the NHR that funds us, as well as the organizations that work with us. And also to shape that legacy, that sustainable change that we can demonstrate we're beginning to make to health inequalities in this region, because that's why we came together, because there are big problems with health inequalities in the Northwest Coast area, and we are here to try and reduce those inequalities, to find ways to improve the health of the people with the worst health without damaging the health of the people with the best health. So it's about bringing everybody up, but the people with the worst health even more rapidly on a long-term basis. So, thank you. I will now shut up and go away. And apologies to Darren for going off script. Um, I'll, I'll leave myself open for a good kicking later because we are in a rugby league setting after all. Thank you very much. So, the next thing we're going to do is uh, Midas. Um, thank you, Andy.